FAT 4956 is a list of astronomical observations made in Nebuchadnezzar's 37th year of rule. Some 19 years earlier, in his 18th year, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem. By determining the absolute date of that 37th year, we can determine not only when Jerusalem was destroyed, but put the entire Neo-Babylonian chronology on firm footing. If year 37 points to 568 BC, Jerusalem was destroyed in 587 BC. However, if year 37 points to 588 BC, that would mean Jerusalem was destroyed in 607 BC. This diary contains observations of the sun, moon, and five visible planets, and their positions relative to the background constellations. There are many dozens of observations that form a unique fingerprint, for these observations could only occur once in many thousands of years. This cosmic fingerprint points to the year 568 BC as Nebuchadnezzar's 37th year, which would make his 18th year, the year of Jerusalem's destruction, 587 BC. Let us consider a few observations to see why we can be so confident that this diary points to 568 BC and only 568 BC. Side 1, Line 1. Year 37 of Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon. Month 1, the first of which was identical with the 30th of the preceding month. The moon became visible behind the bowl of heaven. This observation is nothing to write home about. However, it does identify that the first day of the first month of Nebuchadnezzar's 37th year has begun. On the Babylonian calendar, this would be Nisan the first, which occurs with the appearance of the first new moon after the spring equinox. On our calendar, the spring equinox was on March 27th, and over the following weeks, the moon waxed and waned. And here we've come to the time when we see the first sliver of the new moon in the evening sky. On April 22nd, 568 BC, the moon becomes visible behind the bowl of heaven, that is, in a constellation called Taurus. Not to get ahead of ourselves, but if we count ahead two full months, and nine days into the third month, we come to the summer solstice. Later on in line 16, we indeed find that the summer solstice was in the third month on the ninth day. In 588 BC, the Babylonian year began on April 4th, and counting ahead by that same time span lands us two weeks before the summer solstice. That just doesn't match. Therefore, right from the start, we've established that line 1 points to April 22nd, 568 B.C. at sundown. Line 2. Saturn was in front of the swallow. We are still in the first month on the first day of the month on the Babylonian calendar. On our calendar, it is now April 23rd. Remember that the Babylonian day went from sundown to sundown, not midnight to midnight. The day started on the sundown of the 22nd and would end on the sundown of the 23rd. We see that indeed Saturn was in front of the constellation the Babylonians called the Swallow. The swallow corresponds to a combination of parts of what we call Pisces and Pegasus. The swallow comes up several times in this diary. In line 9, on side 2, line 5, where we find the moon. In line 17, side 2. And on side 2, line 19, where we not only find Saturn, but Venus and Mercury as well. Consistently in all these instances, the swallow corresponds to what we call Pisces and Pegasus. Saturn revolves around the sun every 29 and a half years, and from our viewpoint moves very slowly across the sky. So throughout year 37, that is 568 BC, it stayed in front of the swallow. In 588 BC, Saturn was in the constellation of Cancer, and not anywhere near the swallow. Therefore, 588 BC is not a good match. Line 2 rather points to April 23rd, 568 BC, for indeed, at that time, Saturn was in front of the swallow. Side 1, Line 4, 12th, Jupiter's Chronicle Rising. 
A chronicle means occurring at sunset. And indeed, on the twelfth of the first month, Jupiter rose around sunset. And this is a good match for what is on our calendar, May 3rd, 568 BC. However, in 588 BC, in the first and second month, Jupiter set hours before the sunset in the middle of the afternoon when nobody could see it. 588 BC just does not work. Side 1, line 4. On the 14th, one god was seen with the other. Sunrise to moonset, 4 degrees. On the 14th day of the first month, that is the morning of May 6, 568 BC, one god was seen with the other. That is, the sun was rising in the east as the moon was setting in the west. They were both seen at once. And as you can see in this screenshot, indeed they were. More importantly, this tablet records the difference between sunrise and moonset, 4 degrees. This is the first instance on this tablet of a series of observations called the Lunar Threes. These are measurements from sunrise to moonset, from sunset to moonset, and to moonrise to sunrise. Here the difference between sunrise to moonset is 4 degrees. Each degree represents 4 minutes. Therefore 4 minutes times 4 degrees is 16 minutes. Therefore we can expect that the difference between the time the sun rose until the moon set was 16 minutes. Skyview Cafe is a perfect tool to confirm these measurements. Here I set the time to minus 567, which is another way of representing 568 BC, and set the day to May 6. I set the coordinates to those close to ancient Babylon, and set the time to the Baghdad time zone. Here I used the tables feature to give me the hard numbers. Here we find that the sun rose at 5.12 a.m. and the moon set at 5.27. This is a difference of 15 minutes, considering that the folks in ancient Babylon didn't have as precise tools to measure these things as we do today. This is pretty darn close to the 4 degrees or 16 minutes we were expecting. We can consider this a match. The observation points to May 6, 568 B.C.